In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the grouped and the pseudo selectors in CSS as well as the compound. Now, in order to illustrate these type of selectors, I'm going to modify the HTML a little bit and add it a little bit more complexity to this. So down here in my second division tag, I'm going to add an unordered list. And in this unordered list, I'm going to add three list items. So I'll just quickly add this HTML here. Again, an unordered list, order doesn't matter. So this will actually be a bulleted list. And in this last list item, I'm going to add an anchor tag, a link tag. So a href equals, I'll just put a pound sign for now. And then I'll close the anchor tag right there. So let's save this HTML and come over to our browser and refresh and see what we have. So you can see I do in fact have that unordered list, three items, and this last list item is an anchor tag, which I can then click. It's not going to go anywhere, but that allows me to click it. Now let's jump back to our CSS and we're going to illustrate the grouped selector first. So I'll come back here to my CSS and I'm actually going to delete all this default code we worked with in the last video tutorial and we'll start over from scratch. So we'll just have a default empty uh, CSS sheet for now. And a group selector are multiple CSS selectors separated by commas. So I could do P comma, that's for the paragraphs. I could do another one for the anchor tags comma, and then I could do another one for, let's do for this instance, a uh, class based selector. Maybe we'll do classes something else and dot something else. Then we open and close our curly and I'll say color, uh, let's say green. So what this means is the color green is going to be applied to this class and this tag selector and this tag selector. So all three of those should have this CSS applied. So we'll save here, come back and refresh. And you can see in fact that both paragraphs, that class and that anchor tag are all turning green. So that's how a group selector works. It's just simply separated by comma. Really, this is just a shorthand way of doing this. I'll just copy these and paste this down here a couple of times. So I could have said, there we go. So anchor tag green, paragraph green, something else green. So this is a little bit redundant. So to reduce all of this work, I, can, I could have uh, taken that back just to the group selector like this. So that's how the group selectors come in handy. All right, the next type of selector we're gonna look at is the pseudo selector. Now, pseudo selectors are used for states, and to illustrate this one, I'll use the anchor tag. So I'm going to write a tag for the anchor, just the general anchor, and I'm going to say color, um, let's say red. And I'm going to make the font size a little bit bigger here. So I'll say font size, let's jump all the way up to 24 point. Actually, let's do something a little bigger. Let's do 32 point. And let's save and refresh and come back here and look at this. So you can see that last one is in fact red, and it's got that really large font size. And then to do the pseudo selector, if you remember, there's one that's the hover and they're separated by colons. So I can say a colon hover, and this is a hover pseudo selector on the anchor tag. And I'll say color green. So what this means is when the hover state is activated, do this CSS. So in other words, when I hover my mouse over that last list item, I'll save and refresh. It does in fact turn green. And that's how you can do CSS based rollovers for your menu items. Just to illustrate this one a little bit further, I'll come into this anchor tag and I'll just give it a background color. So I'll say background color, uh, let's say blue. And then when I hover, we'll change the background color to let's say yellow. So we'll save here and refresh. So now it has a background color of blue. When I hover, the text should turn and background color should turn. So you can see both of those elements are changing when I hover over that specific anchor tag. And that's how the pseudo selector works in CSS. There is another pseudo selector. There's actually a couple for the anchor tag. There's anchor colon uh, hover, which we've looked at. There's visited, um, which designates the color of the visited. So once I've clicked on the link, it, by default, it turns purple. If you want to change that default purple color, you can use the visited. So there's a few other pseudo selectors associated with the uh, anchor tag besides hover. 
All right, the last one we're going to look at, and probably the more complex of all of these, is the compound-based selector. And this one tends to catch people when they're starting out in here. So we'll look at a few samples. Now, in order to illustrate this better, I'm going to come back to my HTML page, and let's kind of make sure we understand this um, structure here of our HTML. So this first div, I'm going to delete this ID on the paragraph. I'm going to delete this class on this paragraph. And I'll add an ID on this second paragraph. So I'll just call this ID equals second div. So you remember which one this is referring to. So just kind of get a good idea for how this works. There's a div tag, and there's a paragraph that's a child, and an unordered list that's a child. This first div just simply has a paragraph as a child. So let's say that I want to colorize this second paragraph, but I'm not allowed to add a, a CSS, or rather a, a class or an ID to the paragraph like we did before. But I want them to have different colors. In order to do this, we can use a compound selector. Some people call these descendant selectors. And they're really powerful. So let's jump back here to the CSS. And the way I can do this is first I would reference the ID of this div. So ID second div space P. So let's just do this simple example first. So in here I'm going to say color red. And I'll save this and come back and refresh. And you can see that only that second paragraph is turning red, even though I have two paragraphs inside of divs. And the reason why is this descendant selector is always based on a hierarchy. So what this is saying, if you read it from right to left, it's saying any paragraphs that are a child of, that's what the space means, a child of anything with the ID of second div turn red. So if we come and look at our HTML, which one of these paragraphs, if any, are true for that? So here we have a paragraph that is a child of an ID of second div. So this is true. Up here we have a paragraph. It's a child of just a div. It isn't a child of something that has an ID. So this one would be false. So this one would not turn red. So that's kind of how that compound selector works. And you can have as many levels of the hierarchy as you want. So I could say pound div space ul space li space a. So this is going to affect a very specific element. It's going to affect, it's always the last element which is going to be targeted. So this will affect anchor tags that are a child, that's what the space means, of a list item that is also a child of an unordered list that is also a child of any, any tag with the ID of second div. So if we come to our HTML and look, do we have something that is true? And yes, we do. This anchor tag is a child of a list item. This list item, in turn, is a child of a UL. This UL, in turn, is a child of any tag, it just so happens to be a div, of the ID of second div. So this uh, should turn that anchor tag red, and it, in fact, does, because of this compound-based type of selector. So again, these are a little bit tricky sometimes because you can mix and match um, selectors. It maybe wouldn't be common to have something like pound nav space li space a dot current link or something like this. So you can actually mix and match classes, tag names, um, or rather IDs, tag selectors, class selectors. You can mix and match all of these different types of selectors inside of this descendant uh, chains here. Now one thing I want to point out here, and this will be the last thing for this tutorial, is the difference between these two types of selectors. So here I'm going to say pound, um, let's say ID name, space, um, let's say, let's just say list item. Okay, and next on here I'm going to say div pound ID name space list item. Now these two are different selectors. So this first one says apply to the list item the CSS in here that's a child of a div with the ID of ID name. Notice there's no space right here. Where this one says the list item that's a child of any HTML tag with the ID of ID name. So if there's no space between the tag and the ID or class 
that means that this ID has to be on a div tag in order for this entire rule to be true, where this one can just be on any old tag. So make sure you understand the distinction there. A lot of times it's a little bit tricky to see because if there's a space here, that means something completely separate. This means a list item that's a child of any tag with the ID of iName that's also a child of a div. Whereas if that space is gone, this means something completely separate. So make sure you, you watch and, and see if there's a space or no space in between those because that space indicates that there's another level of hierarchy. So those are the basics of the CSS selectors and we're going to look at some real world examples when we start to build in our next CSS positioning series.